Hello and welcome to The Wire. I am Sangeeta Barwa Pisharoti. With me today is Alfred Kangam Arthur, a name not so familiar to uh, mainstream viewers, but back in his home state Manipur, he has been uh, in news for being part of an important chapter in that northeastern state's political history. Alfred is an MLA from the Congress. He represents Ukrul, a hill town in Manipur that borders Myanmar. A student of Delhi University, Alfred contested the 2012 assembly elections unsuccessfully. In 2017, he got lucky and uh, won from Ukrul for Congress um, in, uh, with just 297 votes. Prior to joining, uh, the po uh, joining politics, Alfred was also a musician and been part of two uh, well-known bands, uh, Phoenix and NH39. Since he joined the uh, uh, Manipur Assembly in 2017, he has been raising the issue uh, around uh, the Hill Areas Committee, which is shortly called HSC in Manipur. HSC has been the, uh, uh, is born of uh, the Article 371C of the Indian Constitution, a special right given to the hill areas of Manipur. And uh, by dint of that, uh, HSC has been the part of the uh, Manipur Assembly. So the objective um, uh, behind uh, the uh, HSC uh, was also to uh, respect the traditional relationship between the hill and the uh, um, valley areas of Manipur and uh, ensure a smooth representation, uh, a political representation of the people from that, from the hill belt. Essentially, HSC also handles the autonomous district councils that are functioning in the hill areas of Manipur. For those who are not so aware of the topography of Manipur, um, uh, let me just give a little introduction. Um, I always describe Manipur as a bowl uh, because of its uh, the way it has been uh, its 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 topography is the fl uh, the the flat of the bowl is the valley and surrounded by the hills um, uh, so uh, effectively over ninety percent of Manipur is hill areas and the rest of it is the valley. But population wise, uh, a larger population uh, resides in the valley areas than the hill areas. Say about 40% of the state's population resides in the hill areas, while the rest of the 60% reside in the uh, valley areas. The state capital Imphal is in the valley areas. And in terms of constituency, 20 assembly constituencies are uh, situated in the hill areas and rest of the 40 are in the valley areas. While so many of the tribes that reside in Manipur are, uh, uh, are in the hill areas, the uh, majority uh, community, the Meites, um, are in the valley areas. So essentially the valley has been the traditional home of the majority Meite community. All the hill uh, MLAs, all the 20 hill MLAs are uh, part of the hill areas committee. So Alfred is also a member of the hill areas committee. In 2020, Alfred led a drive uh, to draft a bill, uh, hill areas committee, autonomous district council bill 2020. Since the drafting of the bill, uh, there has been uh, uh, a lot of conversation and debates and controversies around this bill and HSC has uh, submitted that bill to the state government and wanted it to be tabled at the state assembly which hasn't happened yet. So without further ado, I would like to uh, talk, introduce you to uh, uh, Alfred and get to know from him what is this new bill and what it strives to achieve. So welcome to The Wire, um, Alfred. Um, I want to ask you first, what does this uh, ADC Bill 2020 strive to achieve? Sankita, thank you for having us here in The Wire. I think uh, it's time now that uh, since we also being part of this nation and India also understands where the laws that it has legislated in the interests of certain areas, mm -hmm. whether it's actually being implemented at ground level or not. 
as there are different categories of citizens and our practices or age old practices that have been followed since our forefathers. That was actually taken into consideration when a particular act in 1971 was passed by parliament. And that which is act are you referring? Article 371C, right. which is inserted into the constitution. And as per that, con that constitutional act, the president of India, he had promulgated an order on the 20th of June 1972, mm -hmm. whereby this committee was constituted in the hill areas of Manipur with regard to all the scheduled matters, particular scheduled matters. And this hill areas committee was to function as part of the legislature in the Manipur Legislative Assembly. Now, all those elected within the scheduled area, they are part of the hill areas committee automatically. Right, all 20 MLAs from the hill areas. Yes, all 20. That is one third of the legislature. India understood the legislative supremacy part in our democracy and understood that the sheer numbers in Manipur, that is the valley which constitutes just about 9% of the landmass and the legislature, they have two-thirds. They command two-thirds. So any legislations, in case they are to go by the majoritarian view, then the hills would always be superseded. So this is why when statehood was granted in 1972, India, that is the Union of India, had asserted or inserted Article 371C into the constitution whereby the hills would have a right to govern on its own, to be able to legislate, to be able to issue recommendations to the government of the day, that is in Manipur, and Article 166, which is the engine for governance of states, would never have precedence over Article 371C. Now, all these were incorporated in that order of the president in 1972. The sad thing is still today, it has never been taken cognizance of. And the beauty of this again is, so well things have been manipulated that in the rules of procedure and conduct of business of the Manipur Legislative Assembly since 1972, it's been in the rule book. Now, you are showing India and you are showing the world that this is technically in the rule book. But whereas in reality, in practice, it is not so. Mm -hmm. So this is why this time, irrespective of party affiliation, all the communities and all the parties, that is the Congress, the BJP, the NPF and the NPP, right. everyone got together and then we legislated this bill. We drafted this bill and we have sent it to the state government that is under paragraph 4.3 of the presidential order where we are mandated, we are permitted and as per that order and as per those powers, we derived our source and we have recommended this bill for introduction in the Manipur Legislative Assembly so that at least governance can start in the hills of Manipur. Mm -hmm. Now, this, for the last 49, 50 years, as I'm, I had said earlier, when there is this gap in the legislature, when two thirds is commanded by the valley and one third is in the hills, the sheer size and the numbers this what in, in, in the long run what has happened is everything has decayed. Everything has slowly started crumbling down. Mm -hmm. If you talk of anything, there is no governance because the numbers, like I say, is such that everything is concentrated now in the valley. Mm -hmm. Now, this cannot be so. So you're talking about lack of development uh, in the hill areas uh, also, isn't it? This committee is not only for development. Mm -hmm. It is a, you know, it's a political tool, actually, mm. to, en to ensure empowerment. Mm. Of the people residing in the hills. In the hills, yes, because we don't have the legislative numbers. Mm. So knowing that the hills don't have the legislative numbers, India felt that for the hills to equitably grow in like this inclusive, sustainable growth to, re to achieve a target, mm. we needed this committee. Mm. Now, when this committee is made redundant, and when a particular act of the Union of India, that is Article 371C, is not taken cognizance of and is just thrown into the waste bin, then what happens? This is an act for citizens of this nation who live in the hills of Manipur. So those citizens, their lives are directly impacted and reflected. And this is exactly the reason why to, today you see a huge, huge exodus of all our youth into the cities. And this is not for constructive nation building. But the sad part is they are here in the service industry. Mm. So we need for them to come back. 
And for them to come back, you need for legislations, because it is only through legislations that nations can grow and people can grow, not appeasement. Mm -hmm. As of now till date, in the last 50 to 60, 70 years, since the existence of Manipur Union Territory and then the state, our people have been living through appeasement. Mm -hmm. This is a very sad case, but now, yes, I, I guess the generation of the day, since the, the literacy rate has gone so much higher, we're close to 90% in the hills today. So everybody now, they are understanding their constitutional rights and as Indians, demanding. Now, the people are demanding. It is not the legislature demanding. The legislature need not demand. It is the law that legislatures are supposed to function this way. So what I understand is that you are saying that there's already a, a, a law, already uh, 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 certain powers being granted through HSC, but it's the people's demand that it should be made more functional and more active. Are you saying that? Yes, Sangeeta, yes. And this is this is through the ADC Bill 2020, that it, that is what is that you people are trying to achieve. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Right. Um, but what is the status of the bill now? Because what I understand is that in August 2021, uh, uh, HSC had submitted uh, the draft bill to the state government and then wanted it to be tabled in the assembly for uh, to become an act. Uh, but that has not uh, had not happened. That was the monsoon session. Then it led to a uh, 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 lot of uh, a movement, uh, a street movement, which was led by Atsum, the All Tribals uh, 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 Student Union of Manipur. And then it led to an economic blockade of the National Highway 39, correct? And uh, also leading to an understanding with the state chief minister, the BJP leader uh, in Biren Singh, that this bill will be uh, presented in the uh, winter session. But winter session hasn't happened yet. So uh, that is exactly the status uh, of the bill now so, uh, or anything that you want to highlight. See, Sangeeta, the HAC being a legislative body, mm -hmm. what we have done is we have recommended it to the state government right. for introduction. Now, all we have said after that also, we have had two, three resolutions, whereby again we have asked the state government to call a special session. Okay. We never said winter session or monsoon session, or you know, autumn session, mm -hmm. nothing of that sort. We said call a special session. I don't know if you're aware of uh, Manipur Matters, but in 2015, when those three controversial bills were passed, mm -hmm. you know, it was, a, it was a, like a spur of a moment thing, whereby the state legislature, they introduced it, and within two days, and the, the assembly session was called, a special emergency right. session was called. I remember it. Now, what was the emergent situation in such, in such a situation, case that they called for an emergency session, whereby so many tribal lives were lost, and in, at the end of the day, the bills were withdrawn again. Mm -hmm. Today, the, the situation is reversed. See, you have a law here. You have a law here whereby the Union of India felt that the minorities in the state of Manipur, that is the hill people, the people residing in the hills, they will be protected by this and economically and socially, they will come at parity with the rest of India and as well as the state too. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have the majority, the two-third, which has not allowed for this committee to be made fully functional, then there is a breakdown in the constitution. Nobody is above the constitution. All we are saying is it cannot be namesake. This constitution and the constitution of this nation, this constitutional, you know, provision that is there for the tribals of, or the hills of Manipur. Mm. This has to be complete and this has to be absolute with regard to the functions that have been given to this particular committee. Now, they have not done so. So now, as you are asking, the controversy in this is, when we had asked, we specifically said that please table it in this particular monsoon session. Mm -hmm. we, we passed the resolution on the 16th of August 2021. Mm -hmm. Then it was forwarded to the state on the 17th. The session was from the 20th till the 24th, if I'm not mistaken. That was the monsoon session? Yes. 20th to 0 till the 24th was the session. Now, government bills normally take two days. That is the procedure for government bills to be introduced. Had I done it in a private member's bill, I needed five days. But since this is a Hillary's committee bill and the law is clear under paragraph 4.3 of the presidential order that the Hillary's committee is, you know, empowered to take decisions and to recommend to the state government for any legislation or executive action with regard to scheduled matters in context 
to the administration of the hill areas of Manipur. Mm -hmm. Now, this is exactly what we have done. Now, whether the state government is serious on it or not, it has been shown by their delay. The see the monsoon session passed. After that, see what Atsam is doing has no connection with the hill areas committee per se. Okay. It is just that since they also are part and parcel of the hills, mm -hmm. the bodies, the student bodies have come together. It's not only the student bodies. What I have realized is every single civil society organization from the hill areas. From the hill areas. And for your knowledge, I think which day was it? One particular day, I think it was the 25th of October or something like that, whereby each village, each village in the hills, they all came out in unison and took out, took out a rally in their respective villages saying that we support this bill and this bill should be introduced and tabled. Mm. Now, when you have thousands of villages democratically and so well-mannered bringing forward their grievance saying that this bill should be introduced at least, I think it's a very democratic process that the bill be introduced as per rule of law. Okay. Now, the contents of the bill is something else. Now, what happened then was the arrangement between Atsum and the state government. The state government, since, see, you have, you have the entire government machinery with you. What they did was, they assured the Atsum people, I think, as per that agreement, which we are not party to, that they will call, they will bring the table this bill during the winter session. Mm -hmm. Now, as you know, winter extends till January, February. Elections are due any time now. Mm -hmm. Now, once code of conduct comes in, mm -hmm. then the introduction of that bill is totally cold storage. Mm -hmm. So the government knew exactly what they were doing when they signed an agreement with Atsum. I think that the, uh, the people in the hills, they should realize that they should not fall into such petty things, saying, see, they should also understand the fundamental duties as citizens and the rights of every citizen, which by law is enshrined. Now, this particular law, 371C, which has permitted and which has mandated the Hillary's Committee, we have done it. Mm -hmm. I think the pressure is there from the civil society that this bill be introduced. But that small disconnect where the government of the day, they manipulated and they tweaked it a little bit and they said winter session. Mm -hmm. We have been asking for a special session. This I would like to make very clear. Before coming to uh, <coughs> uh, talking about your role in drafting the bill, what I also want to quickly ask you is that the... Uh, uh, the the law that you talked about, you know, the special rights under uh, of the HSC um, given under Article 371C of the Constitution, it also gives a role to the governor. By that, we understand that there is a cent direct central government involvement in it. So uh, have you uh, uh, or any of your MLAs, you know, uh, across party lines got in touch with the uh, Narendra Modi government or the president or anything of that sort has happened with New Delhi, I mean? Uh, Sangeeta, I think it was around the last part of September mm -hmm. that we came to Delhi mm -hmm. with the Hillary's Committee Chairman. This is 2021. 2021, yes. Mm -hmm. The bill we had recommended in August and in September the entire team came. I think about 10-12 MLAs came to Delhi. Mm -hmm. Across party lines? Across party lines, yes. Mm -hmm. NPP, NPF, Congress, BJP, everyone. Mm -hmm. And the Lok Sabha MP, we have one Lok Sabha MP from the hills of Manipur. Right. He too was included in the delegation. And starting from the PMO, we asked for an audience and I think the Honourable PM was not around those days. He was out on a foreign tour. So he had entrusted, I think, G. Kishan Reddy. Mm. So we met him and briefed him on the matter. He was the Minister for Home. Uh, he, he, earlier he was Minister of State for Home, but then... Oh. Now uh, the uh, Donner Minister. Yes, he's a, he, a Union Cabinet Minister. He was already a Cabinet Minister right. then. <laughs> so we briefed him on behalf of the Honourable PM and he took everything into consideration and he said that he would brief the uh, Prime Minister on the matter. Mm. Then we met uh, the Honourable Home Minister also, yeah. Amit Shahji. Okay. Then we met uh, the, the Honourable Law Minister of the Nation also. Mm -hmm. Then, Rachel. yes. Mm -hmm. And we met the Honourable President of India lastly on the 4th of October, mm -hmm. 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, a thorough gentleman and statesman, statesman that he was, he accommodated all of you and he asked a lot of questions with regard to what his functions also are. Mm -hmm. As you would already be aware by now that Article 371C has two paragraphs. The first being that the president would, you know, appoint the functions of a committee mm -hmm. consisting of the legislators from the hills of Manipur. And the second is the periodical reports that the honorable governor's role is, minimum being at least annually once, mm -hmm. into the functions of this committee and into the role that governance has been playing in the hills of Manipur. Has it ever happened? I think till date it's never happened. I think that's half a century. So you're saying that has never been made operational? 
I think that part has not been. That part because that is directly the constitution. Mm. The constitution under Article 371C, the first part, it says the Honorable President of India will you know, notify for the appointment of a, a constitution of such a committee. Mm. And that committee was notified on the 20th of June 1972, mm. whereby the Hill Race Committee was formed. Mm. Now, the second paragraph of the Article 371C, which is so very clear that the Honorable Governor of the state will at least once annually submit its report to the Union of India, and that is to the President, mm. into the functions and into the functionings of this committee and the administration of such hill areas. Mm. And that the powers of the Union government would extend to giving directions to the administration of such hill areas. Mm. It has never happened. Never happened. This time we have met everyone, I think, with regard to the Union government. And we were, in fact, a little delighted also that the President, the Honorable President of India took cognizance and he said, uh, we are, I, he, that he did understand. Mm. He did understand what we wanted and he as the keeper or the custodian of the constitution of this nation, he understood what he can do and what he should be doing. Mm. So that was exactly, without mincing words, he told us that very politely. Mm. And in fact, he went one step further saying that he was extremely grateful that the hill areas of Manipur today has legislated such a bill whereby the common citizens in the hills can actually avail of governance because he went further to mention that it is with legislation of laws that people can grow. Mm. That nations can grow with laws, mm. not by individuals. Individuals cannot make people grow. Mm. So when we come as a team and legislatures and parliamentarians, when we understand that it is through legislations and with through laws that people's lives can change. So that these, these uh, uh, you know, very fond memories that when we came to Delhi, in the last part of September and October of 2021, mm -hmm. that the Union government and the, none other than the Honorable President of the nation had assured us and had told us, we were so very certain. We still have hope because everything derives from the Constitution of India. Right. So uh, before going into the um, uh, other details, like, you know, whether it, uh, what it in impact will be in the coming assembly polls in Manipur when it was headed for elections. Uh, so I want to uh, also know from you at this point, your role in drafting the bill. Um, and uh, so how, how much time did it take and what all things were, uh, if you can just highlight one or two things, you know, what changes exactly this bill uh, uh, strives to uh, bring to the uh, original one. Fortunately, Sangeeta, I am also, uh, p some people say that, uh, you know, it is inheritance, but it is not so. Mm -hmm. I am also from a political family, uh, worked hard and I lost the last 2012 elections and won in 2017. Right. Slender margins. Mm -hmm. But the thing here is, uh, certain things we know of, mm -hmm. that the, why is the hills crumbling? Why is there no administration in the hills? Why is it so that the chain of delivery is never reaching the hills? Mm -hmm. It's because you know, there are certain uh, gaps that have developed over the years and these gaps have become so huge today that unless something that is very firm and very strong happens, then it cannot change. Mm -hmm. And the actual purpose of governance can never be achieved. Mm -hmm. So from the first day, what we started doing, actually it's in the agenda. The Hill Race Committee is a mini assembly within the house. Mm -hmm. So in the first Hill Race Committee meeting, which was on the 26th of May, mm -hmm. 2017, right. I brought this forward as an agenda, mm -hmm. saying that the constitution and powers of, and functions of the autonomous district councils in the hills is redundant today. Mm -hmm. So a subcommittee be formed, and this subcommittee should go into the you know, functionings and, the, and look into the entire workings of the autonomous district councils, as this has been mandated to us mm -hmm. when the parliament has by law mandated and through the presidential order, given total power to the Hill Eris Committee with regard to the autonomous district councils. Mm. Till such time the law is repealed or amended, mm. the Hill Eris Committee is supreme. This is the law of the land. So was a subcommittee formed? Yes, a subcommittee was formed on the 26th of May 2017, mm. whereby I think I am the fourth, I was appointed as the fourth subcommittee chairman on the 13th of October 2020. Mm. Now I cannot speak of uh, 2017, 18, 19, 20. Right. But I can definitely say after 2020, October 13th, I came up to Delhi several times, many times. Mm. I met judicial luminaries, mm. legal, you know, custod uh, constitutional experts, and good friends here because from school days, college days, I have so many uh, colleagues here uh, yes, moving around. You have a living history. Uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, communicated with a lot of friends, and then everybody helped. 
because when I explained to them saying that this is what the law says, earlier many people were reluctant saying that no, what you are trying to do is something that you know you are trying to take powers. I said no, please read the constitution and please read this. After they read it, then they said yes. And they also understood that there would definitely be a gap between every single parameter in the hills and the valley because of the very fact that the sheer size in the geographical area, which is 91% hills and 9% valley, and the uh, many more legislators in the valley than in the hills. So because of this very reason, they understood and the, the legal experts, they properly said that, okay, we have to do this and by this act, what this will do is it will definitely bridge the gap in the next 10, 15 years. At least it will bring about equity. Mm. Now, we want equity. Mm. Without equitable growth, mm. it, growth cannot just be equally. So you're saying that this bill has certain uh, things which will uh, empower the ADCs, isn't it? Autonomous yes, Council yes. That are under the HSC. True. So that's what you're talking about. Okay. And uh, the um, two things I've noticed, you know, um, uh, uh, observed uh, uh, around this whole uh, debates and all that are happening around this bill is uh, first, I'll come to the first point, which is that I see a sort of uh, complete unity among the Hill uh, people, among the various tribes that reside in Manipur. And this is particularly significant uh, uh, also because if we see from the angle of Naga and Kuki ethnic conflicts that we saw in 1990s, you know, uh, very a lot of violence. And now I see that you you were from you were from the Naga areas, but you know there are uh, the Kuki uh, and Thado um, uh, MLAs also are part of HSC and all together across party lines. So this is something quite interesting, I would say. Don't you think? I mean, it's quite significant, isn't it? Early 90s till the mid 90s, a lot of violence mm. between the two major communities of the hills, right. that is the Kukis and the Nagas. Right. But I think our people have transcended that today. Mm. And the second part is the youngsters. Mm. They realize today that there is no avenue for growth back home. Mm. Now, somehow, I don't know how this has actually taken place, this convergence of all the tribals. Mm but the people have automat automatically just come together. Mm. I think it's this realization that this particular act, which is meant for the hills of Manipur, if we strive to actually reach our target, it has to be in unison. And this is the beauty of India, the plurality. The cookies, their custom, their traditions are different mm. from the Nagas, but they being them themselves, we also being our own, but India recognizing this has clubbed us together as tribals. Now, we occupy the entire 91% is majorly, means majorly occupied by, you know, accepting a few areas, a few square miles in Kangpokpi district and a little in Chandel, whereby some general category citizens are also there. Right. So elsewhere, so I would, you know, without any doubt be able to conclude that not less than 97% in the hills is predominantly occupied by the tribals. That is right. So the tribals coming together. We, I think everyone has come to understand today across political lines, across communities, stating that unless we come together, then this growth can never happen. Now with unity, obviously there will be growth. And with this division, we just could not grow. It was like competing against each other. We have to compete and grow together, not compete against each other. So uh, economically also we're fighting each other, physically also fighting each other, politically also fighting each other. So at in every area, every angle, since we were at loggerheads. I think today, automatically, I don't know whether through this bill or that the people were already united by itself, but everyone has come together across political lines and across communities. And it is wonderful today that uh, as one community, as one people, and as citizens of this country, as tribals, we are definitely demanding. Everyone is demanding their rights. It is just the Hillier's Committee that is not demanding anything. We are just applying our rights. An application of rights as legislators is automatic in operation. Mm. Okay, so another observation, uh, so it is that they, there has been uh, in some in the recent years, uh, particularly what I whenever I traveled uh, uh, through Manipur, I've seen this hill valley divide growing. You know, like uh, you had referred to those three bills that were passed in twenty seventeen. 
uh, was it 2017? Yes, 2017, those three bills were 2015. passed. 2015. 2015. Yes. Yes, 2015, those bills were passed. And soon after that, there was a lot of violence in the Churachanpur areas, the Kuki mm-hmm. areas and all that. And people, uh, civilians were killed. Uh, all of that had happened. And that time also, I had seen that this Hill Valley divide was coming to the fore again, was surfacing. And uh, now also, uh, after this bill has been drafted and uh, submitted to the state government and there is a um, a demand from, there is a a recommendation from the HSC to uh, place it in the assembly, I see a lot of the civil society organizations from the valley areas also uh, 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 rejecting the idea and requesting the state government not to place it. So there's a do you see any kind of this whole hill valley divide I see again now this, uh, you know, the surfacing. Do you see this bill uh, creating more uh, fissures, widening the further widening the gap? Or do you see, I mean, like, what is the apprehension? Will it will it take, take away certain rights of the majority communities, the natives? Is that the fear? Or? If I may take reference, when Article 370 was abrogated, you know, a certain section of people said their own views. Then another section also said their part. At the end of the day, the government of the day took its decision and made sure that governance prevailed. Mm. What is happening here is, like I had said earlier, Article 371C was introduced and enacted to protect and empower the minority hill people. Mm. Now, when an act which is there to empower the minorities, is totally cold storaged. Then those people who are minorities, for which special provisions of the law were enacted, then what happens to their lives? It goes from bad to worse. Today, I would like to ask you a counter question as well as to in response to what you've asked. In the entire bill, there is nothing that says about taking away rights from the valley. There is nothing. As per rule of law, and as mandated by the Constitution, and as again empowered by the Presidential Order, what the Hill Areas Committee has done is, since governance has broken down over the years, last 70 years of India's existence, and the state of Manipur, last 50 years, since delivery has broken down totally, just as an example, suppose you just go to an interior primary health centre, and you go to one in the valley, a primary health centre, you'll see the difference, a stark difference in governance. Everybody is the same. Healthcare is the same. Everyone needs it. You go to the educational establishments. You go to the revenue offices. You go to the water supply. You go to the, you know, any developmental offices that have been established. And you will see the stark difference in governance. It's like as though... Between the hill and the valley. Yes. It's like as though the, you know... Institutions have been set up in the hills only for employing people. Mm. Now you get your employment, but it's utilized not for the hills, but elsewhere. Now that should not happen. The people see the beauty of democracy, like my leaders in, the, in my party say. The beauty of democracy is listening and understanding the weakest voice mm. and bringing that voice at par with the strongest. Mm. The moment you can do that, then you have ensured equity and equality. Okay. So what I understand is that you are saying that this is only uh, asserting a constitutional right being given to the people of the hills, but uh, not to threaten any major the, the majority communities or uh, not to uh, take away any rights from the majority community. This is what you're saying? See, what has happened is when under the, under the present state of Manipur in the last 50 years, mm-hmm. when governance has totally broken down, mm-hmm. it cannot be piecemeal. Today you give me a thousand rupees, tomorrow you say I'm I'm not in the mood, I'll give you ten rupees. Governance is not that way. Mm. Now in the schedule matters of the Hill Risk Committee, which is under the second schedule, economic planning and development is within the purview of the Hill Risk Committee. Now why has the Union of India or that presidential proclamation said that economic planning and development should be and is within the purview as a scheduled matter of the Hillary's Committee is because it's the Hill people that understand the core sectors that need addressing. So is the the new bill that you have, uh, uh, the new bill also has these these extra... Yes, yes. All of this is added. All of this is added. The thing that I can assure, 
at least I am sure that the Honourable President of India's office understands that nothing means no right of any individual citizen of the valley is going to be divested of by this bill. It is only that what is there in the law that would have empowered the hills in the last 50 years since it was introduced in the rule book. It's like I, had, I, I mentioned this to my friends. Supposing like I, I, I give you a Mercedes Maybach and I tell you this vehicle is for you. You use it. But the only thing is that you cannot put petrol and no battery. Mm. What, is the, what is the worth of that value then? A white elephant. Mm. Now, what has happened is, oh, it is there in the rule book for the last 50 years mm. that this act and this presidential proclamation is being followed and practiced. But it is just a technicality in the rule book. In practice, in reality, it is not. Okay. So, my last question to you is, the state is going to uh, election. 2022 and uh, do you see um, uh, th this issue uh, becoming an election issue uh, will, will your party the congress take this up or will it become a um, uh, issue taken up by all um, mlas across uh, party lines how do you see that if i recollect uh, the the 16th of august 2021 when this bill was introduced by my subcommittee to the full committee Every single member that was present on that day, they gave their views and is there in the proceedings whereby each individual and each political party across communities and political lines endorsed this bill. So I think it's just an automatic assumption and we can preclude saying that every single community and individual in the hills is going to go hammer and tongs for this bill because everything else is appeasement. This I say, with appeasement, it leads to poverty. My father is still alive, touch wood. My mom is still alive. My, my father is 95 years today. Still very strong, very, very intelligent. And he tells us stories of what we were 50 years back. We were self-sufficient. Today, our people are 80% living in poverty. Why has this happened? So that means what you are saying that across party lines, this, this has the potential of becoming an election issue it, it, in I, the hills. If it is not, I, I, I would you know, appeal to everybody across political parties. Mm -hmm. They should embrace this. Like, for example, this ST movement is happening in Manipur, whereby the valley is asking for ST ship. NPP has already come out saying that we endorse. See, people have their views. Mm -hmm. This is a free nation. Everybody has their views. They can ask. We are not asking. This is a right that has already been incorporated in the Constitution. And we are saying that we will go as for what the law says. Till date, the law is not being followed. All we are saying is, let us go by rule of law. Okay. So, as an election, like you are asking, whether this will become an election agenda, I, I certainly feel because all communities, all civil society organizations, not the students, the parent organizations, they have all endorsed. Everybody has been a signatory to this, I think, saying that they endorse the HAC Bill 2021 for the ADC. So, presently, I don't know whether you're aware of it or not. The Manipur government, since 2017, they have introduced something called Go to Hills. Right, yes. Which was never prevalent earlier. Yeah, there was uh, a cabinet meeting, I remember, in 2017. Soon after the uh, uh, BJP-led government was formed, the hmm. minister held a cabinet meeting in the hill areas. True. This, this Go to Hills, it's so beautiful to hear. Now, the thing here is, if the state of Manipur has introduced anything in this go to hills that excludes the valley that is specifically for the hills then we would be aware of but it's never there it is just you know the normal day governance that has been happening you are just using a rhetoric of saying go to hills you know it should rather be take from hills and take from village because you are not giving anything to the hills. You are just taking. You have taken away our teachers. You have taken away our doctors. You have just appointed them and taken all of them away. You are taking. You are still taking. Mm -hmm. And this has to stop. So unless it is by way of law, it cannot stop. I, I have so many friends in the valley, legislators from the valley, who say, no, this is wrong. You cannot take from the hills like this blatantly. But see, the, the thing here is, when you have supremacy, and when people come to you, political compulsions, you don't have a choice. We also being legislators, you end up doing unethical things. Now, to stop this from happening, 
This is why we have so many friends in the Valley who say, yes, I think it is right because this will put a stop and it will curb illegal transfers and postings of all of human resources, which is nil, close to nil in the hills today. You go to the deputy commissioner's office, you compare one from the hills and the valley, and you will understand the stark difference. You will even imagine how governance is actually running in the hills. Mm, interesting. So, uh, what I saw, what we uh, uh, saw in 2017 after the assembly election results, uh, nine seats had gone to Congress out of the uh, 20. Yes. Yes. And four uh, to NPF, Nagaland Post yes, Front. Yes. And two to NPP, National People's Party. True, true. And for the first time, the BJP opened its account in the hill areas with uh, four, five seats. Five. Yeah, uh, yeah five, five seats. Yes. So this will be interesting that what you are talking about is that, that across party lines, if it becomes a political issue, becomes a demand from the civil society in the hill areas, we will, uh, this this can take a very interesting term, a turn. And... Uh, uh, political parties may be forced to take positions. So yes. we will keep a watch on that. And thank you, Alfred, for giving time to The Wire. And thank you, viewers, for watching this. Can I say something to close? Yes, yes. Just one thing. The whole team that has met the Union of India, including the Honorable President of India, I would certainly wish that uh, the Honorable President pull up the office of the Governor since the representation is already there. And we've received the communication from the Honorable President's office also stating that our representation has already been forwarded to the, to the necessary ministry, to the concerned ministry, that is the Home Ministry, for necessary attention. Mm -hmm. So I think as per the Constitution, what is said there is that the Honorable Governor should periodically give information with regard to the functions of this committee and the hills of Manipur before the Union Government. Since this has never happened and since we have brought this to the notice of the Honourable President and the Honourable Prime Minister and Home Minister, it would be so very delightful for the people in the hills to actually learn that a report has actually been taken. In case it has not been so in the last 50 years, it can definitely start today because I think Modi ji and Amit Shah ji, they say, you know, sabka saath, sabka vikas. And I think it would be the right phrase for the right time, for the right moment to say that they have already, you know, taken a report from the Honourable Governor. And this is the way forward. I think if the Union of India can actually come clean on a clarification with regard to a constitutional provision by which the hills can actually be empowered and life changes. Now, there is one last part that I need to add. We in Manipur, we are the last in the per capita income in the whole country. In the whole country. And this is not new. And one should not be shocked by this. It's because 91% of the hills, of, of the state of Manipur, which is the hills, is not producing anything. The budgetary provisions, this is why on the 23rd of August 2021, after four financial years, I took the full data from the government of Manipur on the floor of the house. I think a white paper is what one submits in the floor of the house, in the assembly, because they submitted that and I got all of the details, whereby core sectors, whereby the hills survive on, agriculture, horticulture, forest, everything we are being given close to 10% and the valley is given 90% in these departments. Now, if that is so, how will things change then? And where will production come from? How will the hills actually grow? So this is why I think government of India needs to seriously, seriously look into it as empowered by the second paragraph of the Constitution of India, that is under Article 371C, the President, the Honourable President, the Honourable Prime Minister, Honourable Home Minister, they are all empowered to directly intervene and then see to it that the administration in the hills of Manipur is functioning and will function in the coming days as per rule of law. Thank you. Thank you, Alfred, so much. And for this last bit, you know, it showed your uh, deep personal involvement with the uh, the drafting of the bill. And let's hope that the government of India takes uh, notice of this and uh, certain action come gets so we get to see. And um, that's all. And thank you very much, viewers, for watching this interview and hope you could take something from this. Thank you, Sangeeta. Get a sneak peek of exclusive content before everyone else for channel members only. Memberships start at Rs. 89. Hit the join button below.